Chiefs. <laughs> Went into Atlanta, got the dub. Mahomes tosses two touchdowns. Everyone on the internet's crying about a pass interference as if Mahomes wouldn't have gotten the ball back and scored again. Chiefs have won six straight games by seven or fewer points. Glass half full, you know how to win. Glass half empty, eh, a little too close for comfort. Here's Mahomes post game. We haven't played good, I mean, really all three games. Um, we've been able to win. I mean, that speaks to the character of the team, the grit, um, how we've been in these situations before. Um, but um, I'll, I'll speak especially offensively and me, myself, I feel like I haven't played very well. Um, and that's not a stats thing. I just feel like I'm missing opportunities whenever they're out there and not throwing the ball in the exact spot I want it to be at. So um, it's about me getting back to my fundamentals, um, putting our guys in the right position, and then we got to execute at a higher level offensively. If teams are going to make us drive the field, we have to prove that we're able to do that. And um, I'm sure we'll get a lot of the same um, this next week with the Chargers. Okay. Feel better or worse about the three-peat? Uh, I feel um, way better because nobody's good and the Chiefs are awesome <laughs> and like the the Chiefs have had the hardest schedule it's been everyone's Super Bowl they play the Ravens the de the desperate Bengals a Falcons team that tell Adam Schefter it's the biggest game in the yeah, history of our stadium hot. they don't play well Mahomes is having the worst statistical start to a season he's ever had and they just went and so the and the stat you said wilds about seven or six straight games seven points or fewer yep. the last team to do it was another Mahomes Chiefs team which almost seems like they kind of know how to win and that here's the thing I took every of according to Vegas the other best teams in or the teams with the best Super Bowl odds San Francisco Cincinnati Baltimore Houston Detroit Philly and Buffalo those are the next best Super Bowl odds since the Chiefs last lost, we can show it to you, those teams are a little, you know, you know why they're awesome? Because they win slightly more than they lose. They're 25 and 21. They're really 25 and 15 in that stretch, except for the six games those teams have played the Chiefs where they're 0 6. So those are the best teams. Mm. So the Chiefs, like, I feel better because no one else is awesome. The Chiefs are the Chiefs. And they played a very difficult schedule without key pieces, and they still won't lose. So I feel better about I, it. I, I think as far as other teams being, like, it's so early, and now practices aren't as hard. Yeah. Training camp isn't as hard as when you played. Teams aren't, a lot of teams aren't playing their guys in the preseason. So I think, I still don't, don't think we know exactly who's who. New Orleans a week ago, everybody was screaming about their world much. beater. Now they've kind of come, at least Tampa yeah. Bay. Came yeah. back to earth this week. This so week, Wilds we'll is talking see. about Minnesota. Yeah, now you got me. I mean, see, yeah. we'll Not see who's watch. really – we'll know in a few weeks who's really good. Yeah. But, Nick, I'll stick with the AFC. The top three teams to the Chiefs, Buffalo, Baltimore, Cincinnati, they got to deal with the Chiefs' mystique. The other three that look good, the, the uh, Chargers, the Steelers – they don't have this. They're not going to score a lot of points. Yeah. So what, are they going to beat the Chiefs? Houston. And Houston, Houston's young, and they obviously they look suspect this weekend. But they're young, so we we're not sure where they're at. But yeah, I mean, other than Baltimore, you'll take the Chiefs overall. Buffalo, yeah. I mean, Buffalo. We'll see what Buffalo. <laughs> yeah, does Buffalo tonight. looks good. Look, you got to feel better when your leader comes out and talks about his needing to play better, and you're constantly winning. It immediately makes and forces everyone in that locker room, no matter how good you feel about your level of play, to self-assess and to continue to go back to the drawing board and identify areas of where you it can improve, and then thus you can you improve collectively as a team. But you hit a point last time we were on this topic, and you talked about the opposing teams pressing. When you have a guy like Mahomes, he he hasn't been playing good. He knows he can play better, but you know what, what the opposer thinks all the time? Is that he's going to be He's right. going to be right. great. Exactly. He's no, going to do it. A, that's, exactly. that's their mentality. So when you go for it, when you probably should just take the points sure. in this early in the third quarter or late or early in the fourth quarter, when you should take the points, it's like, oh, well, what you're thinking about is, well, the guy who's going to get the ball, right. he's probably going to go down <laughs> and score. I got to right. jump in, Greg, just real quick, because we do have a sad addition to the bulletin board. Oh, oh. Christina, the board, if we could, because I don't know if you were watching the game really? yesterday, oh. but we saw a live cut in from a wedding. And this is Carson Steele's family. And then Mike Tirico and Chris Collinsworth explain they booked it a year ago for this date. Well, a year ago, Carson Steele was a star running back at UCLA. 
So Carson Steele, your family didn't think you were going to make the NFL. So they, <laughs> Carson Steele, they go on the board. What? I'm sorry. Wow. I'm sorry they're going wow. on the board. Uh, I'm telling you right now, you have all the days available wow. to you. They were like, should we do it on a Sunday in the fall? Yeah. And, they, and, and they were like, yeah, he's not going to make the NFL. <laughs> hey, Greg, I'm just curious. Your last year at Western Michigan, uh, was your family making a lot of plans for no, them? Uh, no. no, exactly. So Steele's family. <laughs> You booked a Sunday wedding. Wow. You didn't have deserving. Carson every day when you, before you lay your head on your pillow, a little extra motivation, even your blood and tears didn't believe in him. <laughs> what do you mean? You uh, have Chiefs on the board? I, uh, no, I have his family on the board. They put, they made a Sunday <laughs> wedding in the fall. He wasn't he playing in Australia. He was UCLA's running back. And they're like, he can't make it. He's got no chance. <laughs> Boys fall to one and two. Ravens run over the Dallas defense. <clears throat> a little bit of frustration uh, from the Dallas sidelines. Here's Micah. Post game. Right now we got people just trying to be Superman. People just got on their jobs, bro. Um, we don't need everyone to be Superman. We don't need no Supermans at all. We just need 11 guys playing together. Everyone's in the locker room saying we're going to do what we got to do and everyone's going to be accountable. Then when you come out, we're just like, how are we getting gas? We're not being accountable. We're not set right. I need to get these guys behind me to trust me first. Like, I don't want to make those plays by myself. Because they're going to they're gonna slow them down, right? So I need everyone to do that, right? Not just me. So I don't feel like I should be telling another grown man to consistently be accountable at some point. They got to take them within themselves. So every day within ourselves, we got to say, did we get better? Did I get better today? There is, is spots of true leadership there and spots of, whoa, huh? Time to hit the panic button in Dallas, Greg. No, it's not time to hit the panic button. And, and Micah means well. Like, I, I understand what he's saying. Like, we just need to get back to just playing collective, together football. The problem is <clears throat> they don't have the pieces to get it done on his side of the ball. Really? With it's a void. personnel thing? Stop. In the, this is, <clears throat> look, we. They're a small defense. Last year, this was an issue. Every everyone could run against them. This year is an issue. We want to look at it and say, oh, it's Zimmer. Mm -hmm. Zimmer, new coordinator. Oh, it, no, it's not. This is what the Cowboys have struggled with. And now you have Dak in, no, with no running game whatsoever. All the attention is going to go to CD. So you need other guys to step up. You hear Dak in his post-game presser talking about guys on the perimeter, not doing their jobs, not being assignment sound, having errors, needing to be where they want, needing to be where they should be. All these things are magnified when you're losing games. And you got embarrassed last week at home. You lose another game at home when you were getting embarrassed and you found a way to kind of Make it, a, make it a fight. Make, put put mm -hmm. yourself in position to try to win that game. But you got, ba you got beat up. You got bullied. This is a front-running team. Absolutely. This that is a front-running team. And can, let me just, so I, sometimes that's like a pejorative, just, you know, like an insult. Sometimes it's actually how a team is built. Yes. And so I said before, I, tell me if you agree. They, stylistically, they remind me a lot of Peyton Manning's Colts. Where it's like, we're going to play on a fast track. We think we can score a bunch of points. Absolutely. We're gonna, we've got two Book awesome in. edge rushers. Yep. And but we're we going to force lead. Right. We, if we have a lead, we are going to be able to tee off on the opposing quarterback. But they are fast, sleek, and not sturdy. And not built to stop the run, which the last couple weeks is what, as much as you have correctly focused, Brew, on their inability to run the ball, the bigger issue has been their inability to yeah. stop the run. And then they don't have the lead, they can't play that style, and it becomes a ball rolling mm -hmm. down. Look, I, I, I like your indie comparison. The prop difference is... Dak is not Peyton Manning. Yes, obviously. that is definitively. And true. then he had, I mean, I don't know which. He had, he had Wayne, and Harrison. Wayne and Harrison. He had two guys. Yeah, Edgerin James, that you know, yeah, is a running back. So, true. I mean, that team offensively was better than this Dallas team. But, Greg, I didn't like Micah. First of all, you say I'm not, or not first of all, but in the midst of your comments, you say it's not on me to hold grown men accountable. Well, then don't go say it in the media. If, if you're going to hold grown men accountable, you need to do it in the locker room and say your piece to your teammates. If you, I don't know if he said it to his teammates or not, but to go out and say it in the media, I don't think helps at all. And then Micah also is not doing his part. 
Nick has some video. Here, here's a graphic of Micah's decline. Maybe I should have used decline other than drop.